Всем родам визитки, кому нужна будет помощь, я занимаюсь онлайн. Маша, мне, пожалуйста, эту визитку Я дам сейчас, она у меня просто в том кабинете, он закрыт. А, я уже включил. Hello, hello. Oh, 
Hello, everyone. Do you see my screen? I don't hear anything. Not sure if you see my monitor. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So do you yes. see my monitor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Does everybody ready? So should we start the meeting or we wait uh, for a couple of minutes? Uh, let's wait for a couple of minutes. Just okay. a moment. Okay, fine. Okay, let's start. Hello? Yes, can hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you perfectly. So let's start, yeah. Okay, great. So Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar, seminar. I mean, I'm joining online, so for me, it's a webinar. My name is Faisal Shturu. I am a field application engineer for a design verification product at Siemens CDA. In my previous life, I held a different role as a verification engineer in a different company from the very small one to the very big one. And today, I would like to give you a quick overview on verification methodologies and technique. Um, uh, so please. Uh, yes, excuse me, Faisal. Uh, uh, can you can you first of all speak slowly, and uh, second, uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, if you can speak slowly, uh, it would be better. And also, if you can make some like pauses so that I can briefly translate what you are saying in Russian, because ah, some people okay. okay. So just like uh, put some like. Phrases and then, like, I will give some brief translation of the essence uh, to Russian. Yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Sorry for that. <laughs> uh, um, just slowly and make pause, and I will just add something to what you say. Okay. Um, so, today I will be presenting um, a quick overview on the verification methodologies and techniques. Please do not hesitate to interrupt me uh, to ask question either directly or um, I don't know if you can also write them directly in the chat or but please do not hesitate to interrupt me if you have any questions. Okay. 
So, first, I would like to start with the industry trend and challenges for hardware development. As we can see, in 2020, 68% of the FPGA project consistently missed their schedule. Much of this can be attributed to verification and debug issues. In 2020 also, FPGA project spent half of their time in verification. So averages 51% of the time have been spent on doing verification. Okay. And yet, despite this 83% of FPGA design projects have non-trivial bug escape into production, 68% are late. So this combination is not good. Okay. Most project site creating enough tests to verify the design as their most time consuming verification task. This likely leads engineer to go to the lab before the design has been fully verified. Uh, wait, uh... Could you repeat? Yeah, most of the project site that creating enough tests to verify the design as their most time consuming verification task. Uh, and this likely leads engineers to go to the lab before the design is fully verified. So how hardware developer are staying competitive? As the design get more complex, this drive an exponential increase in verification complexity. Therefore, linear advances in verification effectiveness will not be able to keep up. So, what is hardware verification? As we can see from the previous slide, verification has become a major challenge in the chip and the system design arena. Before we go further, I would like to specify or to define the verification, what means verification exactly? So in general, verification is the confrontation of two things, 
on one hand side is the specification or the requirement, and on the other hand is the hardware implementation. And the goal is to find inconsistencies between the specification and the design. So we might find bugs either in the hardware, in the design itself, or in the documentation. So, as I said earlier, <clears throat> functional verification is an elastic word that can have different meanings based on the context. Depending on the chip or the system we are designing, we can have multiple area and feature to verify. Но э, вообще слово функциональная верификация покрывает вот, э, несколько разных э, технологий. Да. Ага, окей. So it can be analog mixed signal verification, where we have, for example, analog part in our design. So we need to verify the boundary between the analog to the digital work. This is one verification type that's called AMS, analog mixed signal verification. It can be clock domain crossing if you have more than one clock in our chip, and nowadays most of the chip has four, five, even uh, uh, ten clock domains. It can be reset domain crossing uh, to check that uh, most of the time also in newer chip we have a different reset domain so we need to be sure that when we hit the reset all the all the reset are driven properly it can be also lower uh, low power uh, verification uh, which is meant to verify that our chip meets the power intent on one hand or simply that our ship is able to recover from an idle state when we cut the power to save basically to save power, when we cut the energy to save power. It can be also hardware software co-verification because the purpose of any system is to make the system work, uh, hardware plus software. And at uh, one point in time, we need to bring both work together to check that the system is working properly. And this is what we call hardware software co-verification.
Okay. And uh, uh, finally, uh, it can be also logic equivalence checking uh, because um, once we have a design, uh, we have some tools to, let's say, to synthesize this, this, this design into, let's say, a, a physical representation of end and or gates. And those synthesis tools, sometimes they do, uh, um, let's say, optimization that change the, the functionality of the design. So therefore, once we do the synthesis, we need to be sure that the synthesized uh, 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 design is equivalent in terms of functionality to the initial RTL design we have written. Мы используем средства формальной верификации, то есть как бы автоматическое доказательство эквивалентности дизайна. И вот он говорит про логику эквивалентности человек, который происходит при одном такте. Но есть еще и также sequential logic эквивалентности человек, когда мы, например, доказываем, что конвейерные процессы эквивалентен однотакт. Это вот, вот эта вот особая область для сложной верификации. Okay. So a functional verification has to be made on, on multiple level. So in a chip, we have a different block, what we call intellectual property. And the idea is we need to have, we need to do verification on a different level, on a, a IP, which is, you know, the smallest uh, piece of verification. Uh, and after that, either we go to the SOC system on chip or, or top level, and in between, we might have here um, what we call a chiplet or a subsystem verification. <laughs> Okay. And whether we are doing on IP level verification or SOC level verification, there are different type of verification that can be made on every, let's say, level. So either virtual prototyping, formal verification, simulation, emulation, or FPGA prototyping. <laughs> Okay. So let's have a look. This is the state space of a particular design. And here, these small red stuff are bugs, which are hidden in our design, and we would like to find them. So in every, in, in, in a directed test methodologies, we will try to write test by test to try to hit those bugs. We don't know where the bugs are hidden, but we are trying to write as many tests as we can to hit all the bugs. But as you can see, every test case hit one or several bugs. And every time we are hitting a bug, we are fixing our code. We might also, oh, sorry, we might also, we might also introduce as new bugs here by fixing, by fixing, uh, 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 by fixing a found bug. We might also introduce new one. <laughs> So 
The second methodologies of doing verification is creating constrained random verification, which are tests that are random in, in, in their scenarios. So basically here, I have just two test cases. In the, in the previous form, I have n test cases. So every test case should test one functionality. Here, I develop only a few number of test cases and every test case with every run, it will change its scenario. So it will generate new scenario and it will hit, let's say some bugs that are hidden, but also it will hit some corner cases that I didn't thought about in the beginning. This methodology is a constraint random verification, вот те транзакции, типа вот то, что мы с вами обсуждали, там транзакции на значит X и Y с печатными, но при этом ограниченными параметрами, чтобы эти транзакции были корректные, но вместе с тем случайно. Для этого есть специальный язык constraint, и он позволяет делать вещи, о которых не думал тестировщик. Окей. And as earlier also, every time we are fixing bugs, we might introduce new bugs. But with these methodologies, my test case also, if with, with, with another run, might hit this new introduced bugs. Because since my test case are dynamic, every time my test case is generating a new scenario, and even if I introduce new bugs unintentionally, my, my test case might hit those bugs uh, this new introduced box. And now come the latest, let's say, or let's say one of the most uh, efficient uh, verification form, which is formal verification. So the formal verification is uh, the most exhaustive way to verify, uh, 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 let's say, a block, an IP hardware, because it hits all the possible cases. It's, it's mathematically, let's say, proven that it will hit everything in your, in your design. The problem here is the ability to explore all possible corner of logic hits the so-called state space explosion problem. The bigger your design, uh, let's say, the, the more computation power you would need to, to, to find or, let's say, to explore all the state space, which is not possible for the bigger design, but it's very suitable for the very small one. <laughs> Верификация, которую мы не обсуждали, но ее, ее суть за, заключается в том, что вы доказываете определенные э, вещи про, про этот дизайн, значит, используя вот тот же самый э, язык утверждения в темпоральной логике, если произошла какая-то комбинация сектаров и через несколько тактов произойдет там что-то другое, и, э, в общем, тул умеет, умеет анализировать весь сектор, Okay. So to let's say to 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 clarify my my sayings, I would like to take an example. Let's imagine tomorrow, uh, a, a, a aircraft company, either Airbus or or Boeing or whoever, ask to have a flash memory device that needs to go into an aircraft. There is many application for this for this uh, flash system or SD cards. Uh, uh, they can be used in a flight safety system or, or in a collision avoidance system or whatsoever. And as you can imagine, <clears throat> they will not use a normal SD card that you buy from, from, from your local shop. They won't use Samsung or SanDisk or whatever SD card. It has to, it needs to have special features. Нам нужно статистифицировать контроллер для, для SD-карт вот с, с какими-то определенными э, вот, новыми чертами. Ага. So here, here the specification of my SD controller. 
Um, first, it needs its SD controller, it's, uh, or let's say SD card uh, uh, uses serial protocol. It needs to be complaints with the SD specification version seven. This version has more than 400 pages with annexes in terms of specification. Um, it needs to support a different capacity. <clears throat> so um, standard capacity, high capacity, extra capacity, ultra capacity. It needs to support, let's say, uh, both protocol on, on the host side, SD and SPI. Uh, it needs to support encryption and secure boot feature, end-to-end -end, uh, integrity and reliability on the data. And also we have many constraints on the power for this SD card. Ну, в общем, у нас, у нас имеется много разных, много разных требований, то есть эти требования связаны с разными стандартами. Вот, также у нас есть потребление, да. So here, how the, how the, let's say, the, my, my chip looks like. So we have here an IP which is in 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 uh, in blue, which uh, which is uh, let's say the, the 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 SD controller itself. So this SD controller, we have a first block. This is which which goes into the host or it's into your computer, and it needs to communicate through two interfaces: SD interfaces and SPI interfaces. We have a DMA controller which will control the data that needs to be passed from the flash memory to the host or vice versa. We have a couple of register here, which is uh, uh, to, to configure this chip and to be able to read the status of this chip. We have here an AHB or AXI controller to be able to communicate with the CPU because we need also to have a CPU. Here we would have our uh, uh, software that will be executed by the CPU. We have also some securities IP uh, for, the, for, the, for the encryption and the secure boot. And the idea, as I said, it, it appears very simple because we need just to transfer the data from the host to the memory and from the memory to the host. So if the host will be writing into the memory, we are copying data into our SD card. And we, if the host reads the memory, or let's say if you plug your SD card into your computer, you're going to read data out from the card. Нам нужно тестировать, что мы можем значит, переносить данные значит, из хоста в, в, в на карту с, с различными сценариями, вот, в конфигурации, где у нас есть DMA контроллер, HP контроллер и так далее. Да. Okay. And here, as you see, we have two level of verification. The first one is the IP, which is in blue one. So we need to verify this in standalone. And after that, we need to put this IP, which was, was verified on an IP level, we need to put it in the system and we need more test cases on the SOC level. <laughs> That's fine. Should we go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, please do not hesitate if you have questions. Huh? I mean, I, I do understand that it might be a bit uh, too much uh, for these IPs, but just, you know, just wanted to show in appearance, the system should be, uh, let's say, looks uh, like very, very easy to understand or easy to, to design and verify. But when you go into details, it's, it, it appears to be very, very complex. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just also on the physical layer. So as I said, it's, it's, um, it's a serial protocol. It means that the host will drive some command and the card would respond with some other responses. So host, this is a command from the host uh, to the card, and the card, when when it when when uh, the card read the, the command, it understand the command. It needs to understand it, and after that, sending back the response. 
протокол, и мы значит, посылаем некоторые данные и получаем ответ. Но это помятый вам простой протокол, то есть это, наверное, город Нижний So the command is the following. So it's a, on a 47 bits. It's defined on sort 47 bits. The first bit is a start bit. The end bit is a, a, a I mean, we have a start bit and the end bit. Transmission bit, it's the bit which is um, uh, defining the direction from the host to the device. This bit should be one from the device to the host should be zero. And after that here, we have the command index and the argument for every command and every command is uh, 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 let's say protected by crc7 okay So just to understand barely, we need to verify the system with this different speed mode. We have different speed mode and different card capacity. Yeah. Can you go back to the to the previous slide? Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. So, uh, well, just this, this slide would summarize what needs to be done on the verification. So we have this card needs to be compliant with host uh, 1.0 uh, also, and also needs to be compliant for host uh, a greater than 2.0 uh, slide uh, specification which means if the host is above 2.0, we need to verify the card in SDI protocol, SD standard capacity, high capacity, extra capacity, and ultra capacity, and the different speed mode. For the SPI, we need just to, uh, for the card capacity, we have just standard capacity and high capacity, and there is no speed mode. If the host is uh, below 2.0, Then for SD, it needs to be uh, uh, SD standard capacity and uh, default speed and high speed. And for SPI, for SPI, only a standard capacity. And as you can see here, for SD, we have 70 commands. Uh, and for SPI, we have 36 commands. So we need to create big metrics to verify all these commands in every configuration possible. У нас есть много значит, типов команд, ну, 70 команд для значит, SD протокола, 36 команд для, для SPI протокола, то есть там мы передаем команды с помощью этого протокола. И там нужно значит, верифицировать все комбинации вот этих вот параметров протокола. Ага. Окей, okay. да, то есть тут у нас вот, э, здесь у нас имеются э, регистры, э, которые, значит, связаны с, с вот этим вот вести протокол, вот, то есть регистры с стейки, то есть э, номер карты. Э, excuse me, is this memory-based registers or like real register in RTL? So, What is this, is there? Ah, so this is status. Uh, is this some, it is some, it is some addressable register? What type of register is this? Uh, okay, 
То есть это адресуем мои регистры к софтверу. Я. Окей, so this is software, software accessible list. Faisal, is this software accessible register, right? А че то? You don't care. Faisal, can you hear us? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I, I was muted. Um, yeah. Uh, so these are registers which are accessible from the software side, but also they need to be accessible from the host side because the host, uh, from time to time, he needs to know in which status the card is right now. Вот наш хардвер, то есть Verilog, он вот имеет доступ к этим регистрам и либо складирует туда статус, либо, либо получает, получает оттуда данные. Окей. Okay. So here, just, uh, uh, just to make you aware about the complexity, you see this status register I, I just represented from the bit 15 to bit 31. And you see here on the right side, we have all the commands that have effect for every bit of that register. So for example, for command three register uh, in, the, in this uh, uh, status register, bit 22, 23, nine to 12, if we go uh, to, for example, command 27, we have all these bits needs to be changed. And all these needs to be checked in different card capacity and different speed mode to be sure that all these bits are really functional and uh, can, can change, or let's say that the functionality is assured. <laughs> Okay. So um, there is also more constraints on the verification because we have more than one clock domain because the clock for the SD side is coming from the host and we have also a second clock which is uh, 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 to, to run our CPU, the whole host, uh, the whole sorry card. Есть несколько, несколько тактовых сигналов, которые значит, используются в разных подсистемах. We have also some some constraints on the power because the power is also coming from the host. So if the host says, uh, if the specification specify that uh, the card should not consume more than, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, 30 microwatt or 30 milliwatts, then uh, the card should not consume more than 30 milliwatts. Otherwise, it will go down. <laughs> So what would be our verification strategy? First, as you can see, it is extremely complex system, even though this is a simple SD card in appearance, it's a, it's a very simple SD card. There is many things that, that needs to be verified. And our starting point should be always a verification plan. То есть мы вначале делаем uh, план, uh, план на верификации, где мы вот пишем тесты. Uh, what is a verification plan is a document that describe what we want to verify, how we want to verify, and on which level. То есть мы в этом в этом вот верификации плане мы пишем, что мы хотим проверить, на каком уровне и в каким образом. So we need to start by developing our, once we have this verification plan, we need to start developing our test bench. And it can be directed test, a constraint random verification. It can be formal model. It's up to us to decide what is the best verification uh, methodology based on the, on the system we want to verify. 
Используем разные методы, то есть прямые тесты, constraint random, вот, формальную модель. Ага. Then we simulate, we, 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 we do simulation, we simulate our verification uh, uh, environment to uh, find as much bug as we can, or let's say to be as much faster as we can. Как бы группа сигналов, которые мы перемещаем одновременно с учетом протокола. And then we debug because every time we are running our test cases, we will find some issue or, or, or we will find some bug. So every test needs to be, every failing needs to be debugged. And finally, we need to cover. So cover means we have two types of coverage, the code coverage, the coverage of, uh, let's say, the, the covering the code of the RTL itself, and also functional coverage. And this means that uh, we, need to, uh, we need to place some point in our test benches to see that we are, or let's say, to prove that we are covered this or that functionality. Но, то есть у нас есть код coverage и functional coverage, что код coverage – это фактически наш документ проверяет, что, что каждая строчка нашего перелога когда-то выполнена, или же что мы выполнили вот все там выражения, переходы сигналов 0, 1, это вот код coverage. А functional coverage – это когда мы ему сами, сами определяем, вот какие конфигурации сигналов были найдены во время нашей системы. Симуляция. То есть мы проверяем, что вы покрыли все вот интересные сценарии из нашего плана. Okay. So when we are, when we can say that we are uh, done with our work, we need to have two things, two conditions. Our requirement are covered, our requirement from my specification are covered, which means 100% functional coverage and almost 100% code coverage. То есть, мы, то есть мы считаем, что вот у нас закончилась работа по нашей верификации, когда у нас почти есть стопроцентно всех интересных сценариев, которые мы запланировали покрыть в нашем плане. I would like now to go uh, into the simulation and just to compare what is directed testing to constraint random testing. So in directed testing, uh, this is something most probably you are familiar with. We need a large number of test cases, each focusing on a different design functionality. Each test is manually written. So both stimulus and expected results and every individual results in a, is, is, is a high quality and reliable coverage because we know we write this test case to cover this functionality and not the other one. But this, of course, we cannot reach 100% coverage because as I explained it earlier, every time we are hitting or let's say we are creating new bugs by, uh, by uh, basically uh, fixing uh, the old one. Суть, суть, суть в том, что вот, вот есть прямые тесты, есть тексты в конце. Because Yes, uh, this is the rest of this, uh, the rest of this, uh, basically, the rest of this presentation would be focusing on the constraint random. It's just here to, I mean, the message here is to say that um, probably we need both of them. 
we need to st start with a constraint random, but since the constraint random, we cannot reach 100% of coverage because every time uh, we are launching the test, it generate new scenario, but at some point in time, uh, the tests uh, tend to repeat themselves. And there where we need to go with the directed testing to fill in the gap. So let's say we can cover 95% with the constraint random testing and the rest of 5% we need to write directed test manually to hit these parts. Yeah, uh, this uh, is some notion of combination is a primitive test and constraint. То есть сумма суть этой презентации я вам хочет показать, как работает constraint random. Вот и дальше будут всякие примеры на логике, как мы генерируем эти транзакции. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's do it. So as I said earlier, uh, if we do testing, directed testing on this design, we need more than 200 direct tests. Uh, this is a very complex design. We need to split the work. I, uh, we, we cannot split the work when it is done with, through directed tests because how we, can, uh, how we can say that who is gonna work on what? Uh, it is very hard to maintain. Test cases are static, as I said, so uh, we can introduce more and more bugs and there is no possible reuse on the top level. So uh, a directed test in this configuration is not an option at all. Constraint random, which will Okay, let's continue. So what is a constraint random verification, the right constraint random verification framework for me? Uh, before to answer this question, we need to, uh, uh, let's say, answer those questions. So first of all, how big and how complex is my design? Do I need a clear split between design and verification? Second question, uh, the functional verification. How important is functional verification and verification planning for me? I mean, and this is basically very much linked to the first question. Um, third one, do I need advanced randomization, which is, uh, these are, let's say, concepts that are uh, 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 borrowed from the software world. It's like constraint, inheritance, randomized object, dynamic increment constraints, and all these, let's say, very uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, constraint uh, 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 randomization. Fourth question, uh, do I need horizontal and vertical reuse? Because also the idea that when we do verification for, for the IP level, that we can use this environment in the top level, or let's say in the SOC level. And five is the skill set. Uh, what are my team is skilled for? Do I have people that knows system Verilog, system C, or, 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 or VHDL? This is also depends on, on, the, on the teams you, you have. And also finally, do I have a standard protocol like PCIe, NVMe, or SD simply in 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 my in my chip? For example, hey, uh, can you just show an example in code of constraints? Because before they see examples, they they will not understand what is like inheritance of constraints and so on. So we need just uh, make specific a specific example. Like otherwise, it will not be very efficient. Yeah. So give me. Give me just a couple of a, a couple of minutes. I'm gonna uh, try to find. I have. Uh, I have. I must have here uh, some of the uh, some of the example. Uh, we can. Can we? Can we just proceed uh, uh, further? The, the the time I I I find my my example, and I'm gonna show them how this looks like. Но по своей сути, то, что хочу сказать, это что вы пишете на языке систем перелог такую конструкцию, такой объект класса, как некий класс, в котором вы пишете сигналы, которые пишутся как не как речь, а как рен, 
там, типа 30-0, там, скажем, матрис, потом пишется там rent, там какой-нибудь 0, э, там, парс, лэнкс. И то есть вы пишете несколько вот, случайных вещей, из которых получаются транзакции, потом вы пишете слово constrain и делаете между ними зависимость. Это если парс, лэнкс больше, чем что-то, тогда вот он за такой-то рейдж, и таким образом вы делаете некие э, псевдослучайные транзакции с правером связи э, вот, членов этой транзакции между ними, и потом выпускаете такую структуру в BFM драйвер, который превращает эту транзакцию в всегда. Да. Ну, то есть то, что он здесь говорит, в принципе, лучше было бы начать с простого примера кода, иначе это просто слишком странно. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. So, I, I, uh, found, I found an example. Just give me a couple of minutes. Uh, I I need just to. Uh, yeah, I can open it directly in Visual Studio. I need just to a few minutes that we. So maybe just I will go to the to the next to the next slide that. Uh, uh, oh yeah, let's. Is this video code SSH or? So um, as, as, as you can see from, from this slide, um, there are multiple languages to do uh, constraint random verification. The most, let's say, obvious one and the most famous one is System Verilog UVM with this UVM library. And this is the only, I would say, languages that has built-in constraint random solver. I've, I quite often people are asking, what is a constraint random solver? A constraint random solver is a piece of software that, let's say, uh, give you the ability to write very much, very, very complex constraints on your system, and which also would warn you or would, would create an error if the, he is not able to solve your constraint. Let's imagine you say, uh, I have a constraint, keep x uh, superior to 10. And later on in your code, you would have another constraint saying, keep x inferior to 10. And here the constraint random solver would pop up saying, oh, sorry, I cannot, uh, I cannot solve this because you have here a com complete contradictory uh, 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 constraints. И эти правила противоречат друг другу, тогда э, вот эта вот, значит, значит, автоматическая штука, constraint solver, которая делает эти транзакции, она просто скажет, что не могу ничего сделать, не могу скрыть транзакцию по тем правилам, которые вы сказали. So, um, we can, as I said, Verification is mostly a software, uh, let's say, a software uh, driven. It's not a hardware. It is a software built to verify the hardware. So you would be much more efficient doing verification if you have a software background than if you have a hardware background, because we need uh, to use oriented object programming to do verification in a very effective way. <laughs> такие сложные, значит, 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 объекты ориентированные классы и прочее, поэтому их лучше писать чем, которые вот, имеют большой опыт написания софтвера вот, на языках типа Java, потому что там э, 
вот, большая часть это писание таких программ, но, но при этом нужно, конечно, понимать, что происходит в, в, в Арте. В то время как, значит, люди, которые пишут Арте, и как правило, все это отдельно ориентированные кухни, просто-напросто не знают. Вот. А поэтому тут э, вот, 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 с, э, навыки скошены вот в эту сторону. А, окей, я платил. So this is just an example. Um, this is just an example that you understand what what is what what means. Let's say constraint random verification. This example is using UVM methodologies, and the, in the UVM methodologies, everything is packed in agent. Agent means one interface. Uh, every agent, uh, let's say, contains several components like monitor, driver, and sequencer. And for example, if we look into, let's say, a sequence item, a very sequence, a very basic sequence item here, the constraints are very, let's say, uh, uh, basic because the protocol is very, fairly simple. But you can see here, I'm defining a sequence item with a constraint here. I'm saying that, for example, the operation type needs to be inside read or write. It should not be something else than read and write. Uh, another constraint here, it's, it's saying, please keep the address uh, lower than the APB SRAM uh, size, because I have a size that uh, I, I should not, let's say, uh, generate an address out of the size of this SRAM size. But these are the basic component. After that, if we, if, when we start writing our sequences, we can here do something what we call the inline uh, uh, constraints. So basically here, you see this assert statement. This assert statement is used to check that uh, my constraint random solver is able to write, or let's say to solve this constraint. It means if I write, if, if I'm trying, for example, here, item dot operation type, if I do not say if it is read or write, if I write something else, then here the, the whole, uh, I will get a, an error from my simulator saying, oh, sorry, I cannot use that. Uh, this is this is completely uh, uh, out of uh, of the specification, and you are wrong. And therefore, it will let's say point me directly to the point uh, where I'm, I'm let's say I'm I'm uh, I'm missing uh, the, the 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 thing, the, the missing this uh, statement. Another benefit also is that you see this agent, the whole agent, uh, sorry, the whole agent directory can be use it from project to other project. So all the sequence library, if it is a standard protocol, all the sequence library that I write for a chip, which has this APB or AHP or AXI interface can be used with another project that have the same interface. So basically when we write those basic software components, we can use them across project, not only across project, but also within the same project uh, from IP level to the SOC level. Ну, в общем, все то, что он вам показывает, вот пример, я как правило, значит, объектно ориентированного кода, который генерит заданную последовательность псевдослучайных транзакций для довольно простого протокола APD. То есть для, этот протокол, с моей точки зрения, слишком простой, чтобы делать демо, демо пример, потому что это наворачивает много слоев какого-то объектно ориентированного кода, например, и так далее, тут показывают некоторые простые ограничения, говорят, что вот мы вводим ограничения на тип, на тип операции, где находится адрес, вот, и э, вводим это в базовый класс, отсюда в наследный класс э, э, и так далее. И так выглядит этот код, но хотя это, возможно, не слишком удачный пример, но, но вы можете видеть, как, как примерно выглядит код, который генерирует такие транзакции и шлет их на, на, на блок с помощью другого куска, который он здесь не показывает, и который называется Pass Functional Model. Вот. Но вот, тесно, ты, ну, вы, по крайней мере, можете словить из этого кода некоторые ощущения, как выглядит вот, тесты в UVM, используя такой механизм. Окей. Okay. So um, as I said, um, this is the, uh, we're gonna use the constraint random verification methodology and especially the UVM methodology. And as I've, I've, as I've showed you early in the code, every agent is a, 
is a is a is a has a multiple component multiple software component so it has a configurator to change the configuration of my uh, uvc so basically this agent can be used to drive the sd protocol but also the spi protocol based on this config uh, let's say uh, 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 component I would have also a sequencer. Uh, I would have also a, a driver and the monitor. So based on this configuration class, I can change the driver and my monitor uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, as I said, from SD to SPI. But also, if I want to integrate this in an upper level or just want to be uh, a completely in a passive mode, I will disable my driver and I will just keep my monitor to, 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 to see what's going on here on these uh, this interfaces. And this is the same principle. So we develop this component, we develop the same component, but on a different interface for the interrupt interface, we develop also another component for the EHB interface. And all these components, as I said, those can be used across projects from one project to another. If you, let's say, make the effort in the beginning to develop this, you can use them after that in, in another project. And then after that comes the most important part of my project, which is the DOT model. So we need to have a software model of my device under test. This is my RTL, and we need to create a software model of my RTL. And the idea is that every time I'm driving, or let's say the host is driving a command here, so this command is feeded into my design, design under test, but also it is feeded to my model. And my model should, let's say, create or reproduce the same behavior of my dot. And after that, I can compare with a scoreboard checker, I can compare the response of my device with the response of my model. And it will be directly uh, uh, spot directly if there is a mismatch between what, uh, what has been, let's say, implemented in the device under test and what has been implemented in the dot model, then we will see that, oh, uh, the response is not correct, and therefore we need to fix uh, our our design. That's how we find bugs, basically. Всякие вещами, так значит, адрес, бит, тип и так далее, которая потом драйвер превращает в последовательность изменения в сектарной пены, потом это, это блок, который смотрит на наши сигналы и извлекает оттуда структуры транзакции. Вот потом у нас есть модель, то есть DUT, наш собственный актел, дизайн under test. Вот, вот DUT Panda – это модель, написанная в виде, которая значит, работает с транзакциями, то есть это фактически софтверная модель. Scoreboard Checker – это, это другая вот кусок программы, который сравнивает ответы, которые пришли от нашего артела, и ответы, которые пришли от вот, вот, модели нашего, нашего артела блок. И вот так работает вся эта конструкция, чтобы проверить, что блоки, э, ну, мы не можем найти ошибок, покрывая ее тестами из тестового мага. Окей. Да. So and here uh, in this also component we do have also assertion checker to check, for example, if the command is uh, uh, shorter, for example, than 47 bits. We should not wait until the command goes here and goes into the checker, say, well, this is 47 bit. We, we have something called assertion on the interface that can check directly on the signal level if a command is not, let's say, compliant with the protocol and therefore it will fire. We should not wait until the command comes uh, into the dot model and the scoreboard to say, well, this is not, uh, this is not let's say, as, as it should uh, be. Но у нас еще есть, есть блок, в котором есть значит, утверждение в темпоральной логике. Вот то, что я говорю, что если там, э, мы поставили валид, то пока не будет рейди, мы этот валид не снимаем. Вот этот блок он смотрит нашу шину и делает проверку протокола шины. Окей, next. Um, so, uh... 
As I said, the constraint random verification is the standard methodology for verification right now. There is a huge market in the now in the in the uh, semiconductor industry to develop these uh, what we call uh, VIP uh, or let's say verification IP. Uh, here at Siemens, we do have some VIPs. So this example, we can even uh, speed up the development or let's say the verification of this block by using some VIP because the SD standard, the SD interface is a standard, the AHB interface is a standard, and therefore we can use a VIP to, let's say, to drive uh, stimulus uh, directly from the SD side to the, to the, to the, to the device under test. Uh, вот эти вот, э, вот этот вот код на систем, который делает вот эти все э, драйверы, сигналы с транзакцией, фишлятые транзакции, проверки и так далее. Вот эти, значит, verification IP, они могут приходить и от Петра, и от других компаний. И компании вместо того, чтобы нанять инженера, который пишет весь код на систем, в переводе, который вот эти вещи, вот просто берет от, от Mentographics, его несколько подстраивают под конкретные особенности их протоколов, и после этого проверяет их блок или же их систем. Тут суть в том, что вот и вы тоже можете писать такие вот вещи. Okay. So, uh, well, this is, I think, is not very interesting for you, but this is uh, what we find, what you find when you got the verification IP. So you have a test suite that shows all the tests that are embedded with this verification IP, coverage model, test plan, and the protocol debug to see the, on the transaction level, transaction level modeling. Uh, and here how this looks like in the, in the GUI. So basically you are looking into transaction rather than looking into pin wiggling. То есть, то есть, как вот я значит, уже говорил, что есть также гуи, которые визуализируют, что вместо того, что вы видите сигналы, изменения сигналов, вы видите вместо этого транзакции. Кстати, транзакция, это может быть не в течение одного такта, а в течение может быть многих тактов. То есть можно сделать транзакцию, которая там, значит, адрес и данные проявляются в разных тактах, и зависит от сигнала в рейде, то все это целиком одна транзакция, там много тактов. Но мы теперь оперируем не, не отдельно э, сигналами, а потоками транзакций и сравниваем с моделью именно транзакций. Вот. Это, так сказать, облегчает и автоматизирует э, верификацию. Вот значит, протокол XA, о котором я э, говорил, и он здесь считывает с пинов разные транзакции на каналах Excel и пишет целый блок из целой транзакции. Ага, окей. So this is, uh, well, I think this is not very interesting for you, but uh, just to give you a glimpse, see what are the standards we, we do have in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the QVIP. Um, yeah, this is the QVIP configurator. Uh, yeah, this is, this is not very, very interesting, I would say. Um, I would like now to go even uh, a bit earlier. So before start doing verification on an IP, is there a way to find bugs early in the RTL before even start writing any test benches? So let's say you have a designer, he hands over you a design that compiles. Is there a way to find bugs without even writing any test benches? Faisal, uh, hey, but what, what other topics do we have? Do we have? Because we have a some like time constraints, so if you talk formal, we, we probably need to skip formal or linting. Uh, it's linting. Should I skip it? I'm fine. Uh, so uh, how many slides? Uh, how many slides uh, are left? Uh, I still have. Let me just check quickly. Uh, yeah, I still have uh, roughly 10 slides. So you said you can finish in like 15 minutes? Yeah, I think yeah, I can finish in 15 minutes, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, so let's, uh, let's finish it. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
So the idea is to use static tool, uh, which have a formal engine on the, uh, in, in, uh, in the, in the, under the hood, basically. There is a formal uh, technique, as I've showed you in the earlier formals, uh, can be very, very, let's say, uh, useful, and is very, uh, um, how should I say, it, exhaustive in finding bugs. And here there are several tools uh, that uh, that help us to find uh, bugs early in the design without even writing test bench or let's say before writing test bench. That does not mean we don't need to uh, do simulation, but that means it increases the, the initial quality of the design quite extensively. Знати за кода пробують знайти різні в ньому проблеми. Тобто проблеми можуть бути з значить, використання сигналу, з використання пересічення факту поміна і так далі. Окей. So quickly, uh, we have, uh, let's say, we start the first tool, Questalint. Uh, it has a different methodology, so depending on what you are developing, if it is an IP, SOC, or an FPGA, every, let's say, methodology has a, a rule set checks. So basically, you have, um, in, in, in depending on how mature is your design, we are applying rules uh, to check if your design comply with a certain standards. Uh, so, for example, in the release, we are applying 365 rules to check if your design is violating one of these rules. And if you have a violation, this violation means that most probably uh, 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 you have a bug in this, in this area. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, the is that if you have formal, you can skip formal because actually you didn't see uh, how formal rules are made so they okay. they just acted on a, a simulation so you can just do it very briefly like okay. lint, yes. so lint, they kind of understand concept of linting uh, okay so, okay um so well, that's it's very easy, as I said. So it's you have some rules. If you violate the rules, the tool which shows you on which line, and you go there. And uh, if you open, um, if you if you if you double click on the line, he would tell you. He would show you the rule that you, for example, for example here, he says that a sign with underflow, uh, and it will tell you uh, what you have done wrong in this. Uh, why why you have this uh, this error. And it will show you exactly the, the the meaning of these rules. What does that mean? And you would have an example for Verilog or VHDL, depending on your design language, uh, that shows you the violation that you have made. So these tools do some syntactic, semantic, and structural checks to uh, check that what you are writing is meaningful or or not. And we have other tools, let's say other formal tools, which do some advanced checks, which is how to check. And these are basically helps you to find uh, um, FSM deadlock, which is our the hardest uh, part to to find. So, uh, you know, if you have a finite state machine, you might be in a you might have a bug where you you are not able to go out from your finite state machine, that uh, you are in a closed loop. So basically, those tools uh, helps you to find uh, uh, those uh, those issue basically. So, and the good thing is, as I said. You don't need to write any assertion or anything. The tool is smart enough to analyze your RTL and to find out uh, where are the points that uh, you might uh, have uh, bugs or, or issue hidden. And again, the idea is not um, is not to to basically to to uh, to uh, substitute this to uh, simulation but just to increase the initial RTL quality uh, that you can uh, focus on the uh, most important bugs uh, doing simulation. Clock domain crossing we can skip because we didn't go through clock domain crossing and they will not understand this issue, yeah. Okay, uh, well, maybe just quickly. Uh, in, in in every design as 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 you as you have seen here we had more than one clock domain 
we have here one clock domain. Let's say here uh, the 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 clock goes from zero to fifty megahertz, and here the clock goes from zero to two hundred megahertz. And therefore, when the data cross this uh, from one cross from one domain clock to another one, we might have some meta stability issues because this flip flop and this one does not use the same clock. That's that's basically the idea. And uh, if we go into this meta stability issue, the design behavior becomes inexpectable. Uh, so you cannot expect you don't know in which uh, let's say in which uh, area your design would go. And therefore, also there are some tools that you know that helps you to um, to to let's say to to identify to find this issue uh, to to avoid these meta stability issue because these are these issue could not be found doing simulation. <laughs> Этот тул, короче, с помощью анализа кода может значит, автоматически определять эти проблемы. То есть, судя по быстро, быстро, быстро писать ее нельзя, но у меня есть книжка Клиф Каминс Клог Томейн Кросин, которая все полностью описана. Вот, и если вас интересует эта тема, Клиф Каминс Клог Томейн Кросин, вы можете в нее углубиться и ее изучить. Окей. Okay. So, as a conclusion, I would say verification is hard. Verification in safety critical application is even harder. So, if you are verifying an application for uh, a system that needs to go into a car, into an airplane, or in a train, it's even way, way more constrainful. Um, if you if you are not using the right workflow, this might restrict your business volume. So you have a lot of uh, company that are looking for a subcontractor, but if you are not using the right methodologies and the right, let's say, tools, uh, you would be excluded. Uh, formal apps can uh, chew complex part of your design. So, as I said, the best uh, the best methodology in the world is is a hybrid approach where we use a bit of formal, a bit of simulation, a bit of uh, uh, prototyping, because every methodology has its its strong point and its weaknesses. So we need to uh, find the best methodology for the best, uh, let's say, uh, 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 part of, of, of your design. Uh, constraint random verification is a must. Um, well, it's up to you to decide which one you need to use. As I said, I, I presented multiple of them, Python, System C, System Verilog, UVM, many of them can be used. And always be sure that you choose the right tool for the right job. В общем, суть, суть в том, что значит, область верификации она является большой ее Constraint random uh, стандартная методология, то есть ее uh, стоит определить uh, в том числе и в учебный uh, процесс. Вот, и вот, показывает, что у меня много разных uh, средств uh, на, на разные темы. Окей. Okay. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. And sorry if it was a bit, uh, let's say, too much. Don't worry about this. We have some like uh, uh, small code examples, so they will at least understand where to look, and they got idea about general uh, like the like outline of this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye.